Welcome back to Face the State on this Sunday morning. We're joined now by Congressman Joe Courtney of CT2. And Congressman Courtney, good to see you here in the program. Thanks, Dan. It's good to be here. As you drive around your district, because it can be a Republican district, many have said, President Trump seems to be popular in some towns. Sure. Has he been good for the submarine industry? Because that seems to be thriving and he's the president. So actually the story in terms of electric boat really has, it's about a 10 year story. And uh, he certainly has, um, you know, his budgets have been friendly in terms of continuing the growth that's been building up. Again, once we went to the two a year program of record, you know, that's when the place really changed in terms of uh, employment. And it is, an, it's an exciting place. I'm chairman of the Sea Power and Projection Forces Subcommittee. Uh, first time a Navy committee has been um, chaired by someone from Hartford, someone from Connecticut since 1873, by the way. So that's kind of fun. But, um, you know, if you look at the, the workforce today is 17,000, it's going to go to 20,000 when the new Columbia class program begins construction. And again, we're going to actually begin uh, building the facility, which will be an $850 million building, almost as big as uh, the casino up in Springfield. Uh, and, and that's going to happen in September in terms of the construction down there. Um, so anyway, that, the, the workforce is going to go to 20,000. It is now one half of the workforce is millennial in terms of the age group. So it is, uh, it's an exciting place in terms of growth and, and, and really a, a new workforce that is going to be sticking around for a while. You have to strike a balance because obviously you have those Trump supporters and you've got some liberals and perhaps New London who would like to see him impeached. Where do you stand in the impeachment thing? Because some of your colleagues in Washington want to see him get impeached. Sure. Uh, I, so I support Chairman Nadler, who, you know, the minute the gavel came down on the Mueller hearing, uh, went to court to get uh, access to the grand jury testimony and to get uh, Attorney McGahn, the White House counsel, uh, in, in a chair and, and testifying before the committee. That's the right way to handle things. We, and in terms of whether I support impeachment, I mean, that's a conclusion to a process which is really just sort of evolving. Um, I mean, and Mueller, when he testified, clearly showed that uh, the attorney general was way off base, saying that it exonerated the president and that, um, you know, nothing to see here. I mean, there's a lot more work that should be done. Do you think as a president he's stable? You know, I um, am watching his performance in the G7, you know, where uh, obviously the whole world is holding its breath in terms of tariffs. And I've been with Connecticut companies just over the last month or so, one this morning up in Tallinn, CNC Software, which does a lot of work in, in Asia uh, region who are really, um, you know, trying to figure out whether or not to, to hire more. Um, his, his erratic uh, behavior there is very concerning. I'm not a professional you know, doctor and physician, but I, uh, I, I will tell you that sort of uh, uncertainty that is out there is hurting uh, economic growth, not just in Europe and, and um, you know, other parts of the world, but actually right here in Connecticut. Let's talk about uh, your accomplishments. As you look back at this year, what has been your biggest accomplishment so far this year in Congress? Well, obviously moving a budget in the Armed Services Committee forward, uh, again, it is still a bipartisan committee. Uh, I work with my colleague on Sea Power, uh, who's from Virginia, Rob Whitman, um, and we had a unanimous Sea uh, Power mark, uh, which again means a lot to Connecticut. And, and again, I'm very bullish that we're going to actually have a final vote on the defense authorization bill when we get back in town. On the education uh, committee, we were able to get an amendment to the uh, Rebuild America Schools Act to try and get pyrotite damaged school buildings included in that financing. So uh, the Birch Grove Elementary School up in Tolland, uh, right now they're going to be uh, teaching kids in, in portable buildings because they had to tear down uh, that structure. Uh, and we've really, I think, again, continued to make progress with HUD and IRS in terms of trying to get assistance to that very you know, serious problem. And we've worked with Trump um, officials, by the way, in the IRS to, to try and get some of these favorable rulings for, for those types of uh, issues. And, um, you know, a lot of it's just the nitty gritty uh, work. We have a high veteran population in the second congressional district. My amendment to restore the GI Bill transferability for military families uh, was adopted unanimously in the committee. Uh, again, the, the Trump administration incredibly actually cut off the ability of service members to transfer the GI Bill benefit to a spouse or child for anyone who served overseas. 16 years. I mean, it was actually hurting the, the, the population in, in our military that actually has been the most committed to serving. So, um, you know, those are, again, some examples of some of the work we've been able to, you know, make, make happen, even in the polarized environment that exists down there. Yeah, Congressman, you brought up pyrotype 
what do you say to the homeowner who has a crumbling foundation because many of them are losing their life savings on this? Sure. So, I mean, they're in my neighborhood and they're actually in my wife's family. So, um, you know, obviously Connecticut may, took a very big stride forward by creating the captive insurance company. Um, yeah, I was just this morning with the mayor of Vernon, first select one of Stafford and the town manager of Coventry, uh, again, about ways that we can get HUD money community development block grant money um, out in bigger quantities than is the case today. There is some federal money that's, that, that is flowing through those towns in terms of testing, but frankly, there's, there's more opportunities that we can um, take advantage of. I, I really do feel that over the four years since this problem emerged, you know, we've really seen the needle move particularly, you know, in terms of public awareness. And again, you know, frankly, the media has been a big partner in terms of making that happen. And having Connecticut move forward with the, the captive, um, I think is now, it, now it's time for some of the other sure. stakeholders, insurance companies, banks, and others to, to, to also contribute. I'll end with a very brief question. Are you running for re-election next I year? am. You are. Uh, you know, it's a great <laughs> job and it's an important time. And frankly, getting that chairmanship of, of the Navy committee is important to the state. And I think it's important to, to stick around for a while. Best of luck to you, Congressman Joe Courtney. We yep. appreciate you coming to the yep. program. Thanks, Dennis. Enjoy what's left of the Labor Day weekend. I will.